I'm JT Masit. I'm with the Car Ready Mix Concrete Association, otherwise known as CRMCA. We're here today talking about the procedures that are involved in the Concrete Strength Testing Technician Certification through ACI. We're going to go through just the procedures for sulfur capping, so the procedures for the other methods should be reviewed through the standard. Before capping, be sure the appropriate equipment is available for the capping method being performed. Capping material should meet qualification testing as noted in C617 section 5 and verified every three months. Neat cement can be used on freshly cast specimens after initial set in two to four hours, while gypsum is typically used for high strength specimens. As a reminder, as with any standards that you look up on the web, make sure that the standards for ASTM are up to date, typically within the last two years or so. So with that, is this one. First, make sure there are not significant dents, gouges, scratches, or indents in the capping plate. Make sure the sulfur has been heated to a temperature of 265 to 290 degrees Fahrenheit. This should occur before capping processes begin. Check the cylinder ends for any loose debris. Check the perpendicularity of the cylinder is within about 1 8 inch across the top surface. The capping plate should be warm. This is typically done in the oven prior to and between capping specimens. Lightly oil the contact surface of the capping plate. Wipe excess oil off. This should be mineral oil. WD-40 is typically used. Stir the sulfur and ladle the appropriate amount into the capping plate. Immediately slide and gently place the prepared specimen on the plate guides and form the cap. If the specimen is not placed smoothly or is placed too quickly, splashing will occur and can cause voids or even an uneven cap. Allow the sulfur time to set and then carefully jar the specimen loose of the capping plate by twisting and tapping the base plate. A rubber mallet can be used. Once capped, Check the surface for plainness using a straight edge and feeler gauge. Also check for voids by dropping a coin or washer onto the surface and listen for change in tone. Repeat this process for the opposite end of the specimen. At times cylinders are required to be capped or at times some cylinders are just not cast properly and are required to be capped. This procedure allows for a smooth and level surface for strength testing. If there are voids or a surface is out of plane, immediately remove the freshly placed sulfur cap, clean the surface of the cylinder, and restart the process. Once complete, immediately place capped specimens in a moist room or cover with a double layer of moist burlap until strength testing occurs. If you are a CRMCA member in Colorado or even within the region, please don't hesitate to email me with any questions you might have on this procedure, and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can with the best information that I have. So thank you very much for watching, and thank you to Caesar Inc. for helping out in the lab and showing this procedure.